Injuries are an unavoidable fact of life in pro wrestling, but most are a bump in the road in a performer's career. An unfortunate few, however, never competed in the ring again after a particularly devastating accident. Shinjiro Otani had one of the most interesting careers in the history of wrestling. He has been in main events in four different decades, competing against opponents including Eddie Guerrero, Sakuraba, Jushin Thunder Liger, Chris Benoit, Eddie Kingston, and Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinjiro's moveset was years ahead of its time. He also traveled around the world and had amazing matches with whomever he was paired with. Otani began his career in the early 90s in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He competed in the top of the Super Juniors and showed his skills early on. At NJPW Hyper Battle 1996, Otani defeated Benoit as Wild Pegasus to become the first ever WCW Cruiserweight Champion. Otani won the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Titles twice before moving to Heavyweight. He eventually left NJPW to help found Pro Wrestling 01, where he won the Heavyweight title. On April 10, 2022, Otani was booked to face Takashi Sugira at the 01 Anniversary Show. What happened in that match will unfortunately live forever in the minds of Japanese wrestling fans. Otani took a German suplex into the turnbuckle and was unable to move afterwards. He was rushed to the hospital and diagnosed with a cervical spine injury. He could not move his limbs. He has since begun rehab, but his in-ring career is all but certainly done. Ravishing Rick Rude had an incredible run in professional wrestling. A gifted athlete and genetic marvel, Rude parlayed these gifts into an illustrious career. Rude often worked as a classic heel strutting to the ring, insulting the audience and semi-stripping for the ladies. Some of his highlight insults include calling the crowd Minnesota meatheads, Rhode Island rednecks, and Atlantic City sweat hogs. Rude wrestled for World Class Championship Wrestling and Jim Crockett Promotions before making his way to the WWF. There, he had a terrific feud with Jake Roberts, where Rude famously airbrushed a painting on his tights of Roberts' then-wife. Rude later won the Intercontinental title from the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania V. I'm gonna win this because I'm gonna be on the Ultimate Warrior like a leopard on a lamb. Rude is also the only wrestler to appear on Raw and Nitro in the same night, having pre-recorded the Raw episode before leaving for WCW, but that achievement came after the injury that essentially ended his in-ring career. At Wrestling Don Taku 1994 in Japan, Rude was facing Sting for the International Heavyweight Championship. Sting hit Rude with a suicide dive, and Rude hit his back on a small stage that was elevating the ring. Amazingly, he finished and won the match, but his injury was so serious he had to retire. Rude worked in wrestling as an enforcer and manager afterward, but his in-ring career was finished. The son of Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Richie Steamboat grew up around professional wrestling. He had his father's quick feet and timing, coupled with mat wrestling skills. This blend gave the younger Steamboat the ability to work a variety of different styles. No matter who the opponent, Richie could have a good match. Richie decided at a young age to pursue a career in the family business. He was trained by Harley Race and wrestled for Harley's WLW before heading overseas to pro wrestling Noah. Richie eventually signed with WWE and was sent to Florida Championship Wrestling, or FCW, to develop. While there, Richie would develop a special chemistry with Seth Rollins. As tag team partners or opponents, Seth and Steamboat always put on a good show. Richie seemed destined for great things, but that would all come to an abrupt end. Richie was booked to face Cassius Ono at an NXT show on November 12, 2012. He landed wrong on a moonsault and later described losing all feeling in his body during an interview on the Pancakes and Power Slams podcast. Incredibly, he finished the match and even managed to work for a few more weeks. Eventually, a doctor told Richie he couldn't wrestle anymore. Considering the young star's talent and dedication, it's very sad to consider what might have been. Some fans consider Bret the Hitman Hart the best in-ring wrestler of all time. He has to be in any conversation about the greatest talent ever from bell to bell. A member of the famous Hart family, Bret grew up around professional wrestling in Canada. He showed an early aptitude for wrestling and went on to become one of the top stars in the history of WWE. He was also famous for taking care of his opponents, in that they could be assured he'd be safe with them and avoid causing injury. The Hitman left the WWF in 1997 under a cloud of controversy after the Montreal Screwjob. 
After forcibly losing the WWF title, Bret left for WCW. About two years after arriving in WCW, the hitman was paired with Goldberg, a former football player who was very popular but also very green, with a reputation for not being particularly safe in the ring. Even so, Goldberg won over not only the fans but also the WCW head office, and was positioned to become the top guy in the company. Brett and Goldberg competed at the main event of WCW Starcade 1999. In what should have been a fairly routine spot, Brett came off the ropes to take a kick from Goldberg. Goldberg absolutely stapled Brett with a kick to the right side of his head, promptly concussing him. Brett started having headaches, and eventually his doctor told him his career was over. You know, I wish that, that um, Bill Goldberg had never kicked me in the head as hard as he could. Sid Vicious has the awful distinction of having one of the most visually stomach-churning injuries ever on live TV. A multi-time champion in WWE and WCW, Sid also main-evented WrestleMania 8 and WrestleMania 13. One of Sid's early trademarks was repeatedly delivering finishers to opponents he had already beaten. His opponent would then be wheeled out on a stretcher only for Sid to promptly attack them again. Always at his best when working with a smaller, technically sound talent, Sid shone under the bright lights. He won the title from Shawn Michaels at Survivor Series 1996 and put on a great big man performance in the process. Sid's match with Bret Hart at In Your House 12, It's Time is another classic. Sid was on a path to be a consistent draw and solid main event performer. Bad luck and bad advice took that all away. At WCW's Sin pay-per-view in 2001, Sid faced Scott Steiner, Jeff Jarrett, and Animal in a Four Corners match. Sid was asked by WCW management to perform a big boot off of the second turnbuckle. Sid was a traditional big man wrestler and had very little experience with high flying. When he attempted the spot, the results were disastrous. Vicious essentially snapped his leg in half, breaking his tibia and fibula. Sid later sued WCW for being pressured into attempting the move. Sid returned to the ring sporadically for some indie matches and one Raw match years later, but he was clearly compromised. His career never recovered. Darren Drozdov had just about the worst experience possible in his brief time in professional wrestling. A legitimate high school football star, Drozdov eventually landed in the NFL. His NFL career lasted three seasons and saw him play for the Philadelphia Eagles, New York Jets, and Denver Broncos. During his pro football career, he earned the moniker Puke after he vomited live on the field during a Monday night football game. After leaving the NFL, Drozdov started wrestling on the independents. After a stint in ECW, Drozdov signed with WWE. There is a famous and very depressing clip in the documentary Beyond the Mat of Drozdov meeting Vince McMahon for the first time, where McMahon implores him to vomit. From that moment, Droz, originally named Puke, was born. His gimmick was that he could throw up on command. At a SmackDown taping on October 5, 1999, Droz's career came to a sudden and tragic end. Drozdov and D'Lo Brown were matched up in a singles contest. During D'Lo's signature running powerbomb, disaster struck. A combination of Brown not securing a firm grip and Draws not being able to jump resulted in Draws landing squarely on his head and neck, fracturing two discs in his spine. Drozdov spent the rest of his life as a quadriplegic. In June 2023, Darren Drozdov passed away. He was 54 years old. Hayabusa was an innovator and a risk-taker. He was also one of the first wrestlers to seamlessly blend the Mexican Lucha Libre style with traditional Japanese wrestling, with training from none other than Rey Mysterio Sr. Hayabusa's ability to soar coupled with his clean technique and hard-hitting moves made him entirely unique. Hayabusa got his start in FMW in the early 90s and eventually ascended to the top of the promotion. During his career there, he won numerous titles and headlined the FMW anniversary show six times. Hayabusa was matched up with Mammoth Sasaki on October 22, 2001. Hayabusa attempted a lion salt off of the middle rope, slipped, and landed on his head. He cracked two vertebrae and very nearly died. He survived, but his in-ring career was finished. Hayabusa stayed involved in wrestling as a sort of figurehead and occasional promoter, but it's heartbreaking to think that this incredibly talented wrestler's career ended in the blink of an eye. Unless they know all the minutia of the careers of the Rockers, it's likely many fans have never even heard of Chuck Austin. Austin had one of the shortest and saddest careers in the history of the business. He was one of many former college athletes who decided to pursue a career in the wrestling business. Six weeks into this career, Austin traveled to a WWF show and managed to get on the card. 
On December 11, 1990, Austin teamed with Lanny Poffo against Marty Jannetty and Shawn Michaels, the Rockers. The Rockers were one of the hottest tag teams on the planet. Poffo and Austin were there to do a job, or in other words, lose. At the end of the match, Austin was going to take the rocker dropper from Janetti. Austin landed wrong, broke his neck, and was paralyzed. Janetti has always claimed that the reason Austin got injured was due to his lack of experience. Given his lack of training, it certainly wasn't safe for Austin to be in the ring. Austin sued the WWF and was awarded $10 million in an out-of-court settlement. Chuck's injury had a long-lasting impact. WWE no longer books talent with that little experience. Austin would never fully recover from the injury. Tyson Kidd is an incredible example that there is life for wrestlers after a horrific injury. Tyson grew up in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and holds the distinct honor of being the last wrestler trained in the Heart Dungeon. Kidd cut his teeth in stampede wrestling before heading to Japan to compete in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Tyson entered the Best of the Super Juniors tournament numerous times. He had limited success but built his resume as a legitimate in-ring talent. Kidd eventually made his way to the WWE, where his most notable work was with Davy Boy Smith Jr. and Natalia, his real-life wife. Smith, the son of the original British Bulldog, Natalia and Kidd called themselves the Hart Dynasty, with a gimmick centered on representing the Hart legacy. On June 1, 2015, Kidd worked a raw dark match against Samoa Joe. Kidd took Joe's muscle buster finish and injured his spine. In an interview with Chris Van Vliet, Kidd described losing feeling in his body for five seconds and being airlifted to different hospitals. When we hit, it just, everything went, it's the whitest light I've ever seen in my life. This injury ended Kidd's in-ring career, but he has remained with WWE as a very successful producer and road agent. Chris Nowinski is a Harvard graduate who competed on the first season of Tough Enough. Despite losing out to Maven on the reality show, Nowinski eventually landed in WWE. Chris debuted on Raw on June 10, 2002, working an arrogant heel gimmick built around his Harvard education. Nowinski was never really able to rise above the mid-card there. He feuded with the likes of Tommy Dreamer, Al Snow, and Maven, but his injuries cut his career very short. In June of 2003, at a Raw house show, Nowinski was teamed with Rodney Mack against the Dudley Boys. Nowinski took a kick to the head from Bubba Ray Dudley and was instantly concussed. Compounding the problem by continuing to work, Nowinski was concussed numerous times. He developed post-concussion syndrome and could no longer compete. Nowinski's wrestling career was over, but his mission was just beginning. Chris became an expert on concussions and head injuries. He now has a PhD in behavioral neuroscience and wrote a book called Head Games about concussions and chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE. He is an expert speaker and gives talks all over the world. Now the head of the Concussion Legacy Foundation, Nowinski has taken his pain and turned it into hope for other athletes. It is hard to find a better second act than that.